What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 22 in the math three questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that the vertices of a triangle are at 0, 0, 6, 6, and 9, 3. And we're trying to find the volume in cubic units of the figure created by rotating the triangle about y equals x. Now this is going to test us on a really weird uh, geometry concept to get if you're not already a visual thinker, and that's rotating a two-dimensional shape around a line. We'll also have to use a formula for the volume of a particular 3D solid, and we'll have to use Pythagorean theorem as coordinate distance. So this is going to cover a lot of ground in terms of geometry, but let me go ahead and get out my graph paper that I made. and actually graph the three points it gives me as well as the line. So zero, zero is this one right here. Six, six is up here. And then nine, three is right here. So let me name these. Zero, zero, six, six. 9, 3, and in fact, that won't be too good if I have that there, so let me put that up here, 0, 0, okay. Next, I need my line y equals x, and that is going to take me just up here, keeping in step with these diagonals, and I'm also going to connect the sides of my triangle. So there's that, and draw that over here. This question is a great example of why you should always draw whatever the problem is giving you. Because when I first saw this question, I actually thought it was going to be much more complicated than it turned out to be. But anyway, let's say that we rotate this 2D shape around this line then it would kind of look something like something like this and then we would kind of rotate it here I'll draw another little circle thing around there if this looks familiar it might be because it looks like a cone and in fact thankfully it is because this line representing our height and this line representing the radius of the circle, since we took this and rotated it around, actually make a right angle. And I know this because their slopes are perpendicular. This line goes one up and one right. This line goes one down and one right. So these, uh, the fractions that we would write these two slopes in, one over one and negative one over one, are like we took each of these fractions, flipped them over and put a negative sign on it to get the other one. So that's how I know that they're perpendicular and that they make a right angle. Now at this point, I'm going to remember my formula for the uh, volume of a cone. And that formula is that my volume equals one-third pi r squared height. This last part is the formula for the area or the volume of a cylinder. And we just divide it by three because for some reason exactly three cones fit into one cylinder. Not sure entirely why that works, but it's kind of cool to think about. Um, but anyway... Let's go ahead and actually figure out our radius, this line, and our height, this line. For our radius, I'm going to go ahead and use coordinate distance and treat this like it's a right triangle, where we have three units across, three units down. These make a right angle, and I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or three squared plus three squared equals c squared to figure out this line and treating it as a hypotenuse. Evaluate this side, I get 18. Since 18 equals c squared, c equals the square root of 18. And remember, this is also like the radius of our cone. So now I have a value for radius, the square root of 18. Now I need my height. From 0, 0 to 6, 6, I can probably already guess that I'm going up 6 and right 6. These make a right triangle, and I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem all over again, except this time my A is 6, my B is 6, and my C now represents the height of that cone. 
So this is 36 plus 36, also known as 72. So 72 equals c squared. Then c equals the square root of 72. So that's my height. Now that I have all the information I need to use my volume formula, my last step is to actually go ahead and use it. So let me take this off because it's getting very cluttered. Bring it back to this problem. My volume formula was one third pi r squared height. And so I need to go ahead and plug in the numbers that I know. That's one third times pi times the square root of 18 squared times, and then the square root of 72. I'm gonna go ahead and break apart into square root of 36 and the square root of two. So my height, I'm gonna write now as the square root of 36 is six root two. And I'm just doing this as a precaution because I see that all my answer choices have the square root of two in them. So I'm going ahead and doing this trick where I break apart the square roots from 72 into 36 times two and take the square root of 36 and leave the square root of two inside something. I'm doing that right now, just so I don't have to do it later on with a much bigger number. All right, so now I need to go ahead and I'm, I actually see that pi is in two of my answer choices and the other answer choices have um, whole numbers outside the square root sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave pi by itself. So that equals pi times one third times, that's one third, not one half, times 18, because the square root of 18 squared gets me 18, times six, times the square root of two. And once again, pi and the square root of two, I'm gonna leave alone and just figure out what one third times 18 times six is. And if you do this in your calculator, you should get 36. So this should equal 36 times pi times the square root of two, which after all that brings us to an answer of C.